people with OCD can live normal productive lives. It may, they may always have it, but they can learn to deal with it and minimize it to such a small level that it won't bother them anymore. So the long-term effects of treatment are just wonderful. The prognosis is terrific. I mean, you don't have to live with this so that it's stopping you from your daily life. I mean, many times people with OCD have a lot of trouble just even having personal relationships, getting married, um, having a uh, you know relationship with a man or a woman because they have always this something that they're hiding, um, or they having arguments and fights with someone because of the rituals that they need to perform in order to make themselves feel better. So let's do an example. For example, let's just say that a person has OCD fear of um, the house burning down. So before uh, they leave the house, and I'll say it's a she, before she leaves the house, she has to check the stove and make sure that nothing is going to catch fire so she can leave the house. Well, that person goes in, checks the stove, walks away. But the moment she sits in the car, she feels like, oh my gosh, did I check the stove? What if I didn't? What if I missed it? I can't remember. I'll go back. She goes back in. She checks the stove. And this becomes a bigger and bigger problem because now it won't be just the stove. It becomes the doors. It becomes the windows. She starts checking the computers, the telephones. Anything could be left plugged in, anything. So it grows and grows and grows. And it becomes so unmanageable that someone that cares about this woman, perhaps her husband, will try to give her some relief and say, you know what, it's okay, I'll check for you. Now you've involved your husband in the whole thing, and he, he starts checking, and next thing you know, there's an important appointment, and everybody's late, and the fighting begins. So what to do? Well, when you're going through treatment of OCD, and this you can do on your own, the whole family has to be on board. You've got to say, we're not inviting OCD into our home anymore. I'm going to support you, you tell the person, and I'm going to do what I can to help you fight it. But I'm not going to help it grow bigger. I'm not going to feed it anymore or make it welcome in this home. And you now label the OCD as another person. It's something else. It's a thing. It's not a person, it's a thing. Whatever you want to make it, but it's not the person that you're mad at. You're mad, everyone gets mad at the OCD. That's going to be the new way of thinking. It's no longer little Johnny who's doing the problem. It's the OCD. That's what's talking. That's what's making you do it. You're labeling it now. So I want you to sit down, you get a piece of paper, and you write down all of the anxieties that you have. So you make a list of all of the things that you have anxiety from, um, that you have obsessions with, that you have OCD problems with, um, whether it's, you know, touching things, germs, uh, checking, double checking, um, whatever those fears are, you write them all down, and I want you to assign them an anxiety level from 1 to 10. Um, and once you've got that list of items, the whole family should know about this so that everybody can be on board to help you uh, in your journey to try to, to overcome it because they, they're going to need to help you along. Pick something on the list that's not on the top of your anxiety level. We're going to start small. So start with the thing that bothers you the least. So let's just say, for example, you know, Julia, we'll make up a name, um, wants to be able to leave the house. The goal should be that she can leave the house with checking the stove once and then she can be on her merry way and go out and do her business and not worry about whether or not the house is going to burn down. Um, and currently, say she's checking it 20 times right now. She's built herself up to going back and going back and checking it 20 times um, to see if, in fact, it is really off and that the house won't burn, won't burn down so that she can rest assured. Um, so the first step towards the long-term goal of just checking it once and walking out the door, the first step would be to try to wean her away from checking the stove so many times. So we're going to start with not checking it 20 times. Maybe perhaps we're going to cut it in half 
and we'll check it 10 times. And if it's really, if she's really a problem, maybe you only want to do it 15 times. You use your judgment, work on it together, the steps that, you know, you feel need to be done for yourself to get over, um, and to get over the problem. You may need more steps, but, you know, on a piece of paper, write down a date where you want that long-term goal to be achieved, whether it's three weeks, two weeks, a month, whatever it is, and try to stick to it. Map out as many steps that you think you'll need to take and what the people around you need to do in order for you to achieve that. And the people around you are going to have to change the way they behave. So if every time you worried about that stove being off, you asked your husband, do you think I turned off the stove? Do you think it's okay? What if the house is going to burn down? Oh my gosh, what, should we go back? Should we go back? And he was just like, okay, no, you turned it off. Everything was fine. We don't need to go back. Or perhaps he drove you back and you were so, and he made you look again. Or perhaps he looked for you. Well, that's giving reassurance. That's actually helping OCD get worse. And it's tying all your family members into this disorder. So what that person is going to do now, the husband, is he is not going to, he's going to not provide any more reassurance whether she checked or not. And maybe in the beginning for the first step, he can say, look, I'll reassure you only once. I'm not taking you back to the house. I will only tell you, yes, you double-checked it, and it was fine, and we can leave. And only once, maybe for the first certain amount of days, three days of the first step in your treatment, um, where you're going to check now ten times, you get one reassurance, and when you start asking him after that, well, what do you think? Do you think that I checked it? Do you think everything's okay? If he's already reassured you that once time, then after that he has to say, I am no longer going to answer your question. I'm going to say, no OCD. Now you shut up. Stop talking to Julia. You're no longer welcome here. We, you're going to say negative things about the OCD. You decide what it's going to be. But whatever it is, it's going to be shut up, go away, stop talking OCD. I'm not going to listen. And that's what you're going to say. That's what your loved one is going to say. And that's what the person with the OCD is going to say to themselves. They're going to say, stop it, stop listening. I mean, stop talking to me. I'm not listening. And, and try to put it out of their mind. Now, of course, the anxiety is going to build. Once she's completed those 10 looks back and forth, I mean, the, the anxiety is building the whole time. She's feeling, oh my gosh, what did I do? Did I check it? Then she starts the ritual. She starts going and looking to try to relieve it. Well, once she's out of times, now she's just going to have to sit and habituate. She's going to have to get used to the anxiety. We let her have a little bit, but we're not letting her have any more. She's going to get used to having <clears throat> less um, checking less ritual and compulsion, and now she's got to have more anxiety. And she'll get used to that. Her body will habituate. Her adrenaline will eventually slow. She will realize that she got through this crisis, and everything's okay, and the house didn't burn down, and I didn't have to check more than 10 times. And after a certain amount of days, she'll be really good with those 10 times, and only one reassurance. So now, step two. Move on to that one, and maybe that's going to be for the next four days. And she only gets to check five times. She goes back and forth as the anxiety builds. She thinks, oh my gosh, she's got to go back and look and check. She performs her rituals five times, only this time now, for the five times she looks. Now the husband doesn't say anything to her. So when she says, oh, I'm, did, I, did I turn off the stove? Is everything, do you think everything's okay? I mean, am I right with checking it five times? And he has to say, I'm not providing you any reassurance, OCD. I am not going to talk to the OCD, and I'm not going to answer your question. So shut up, OCD, and go away. And she's going to say the same thing to herself until she's going to keep saying that, and he's going to keep saying until the anxiety starts to subside, she starts to calm down, the anxiety starts to go away. And it's going to take some time. This stuff does not happen overnight. You have to, and there are going to be setbacks. So prepare yourself. There will be setbacks. Nobody gets to the top of a mountain easily. You have to climb. And there's sometimes you fall back a little and you climb up a little bit more. So be patient and take your time. And maybe now for the third time, you try to, you know, tell her she can only check twice. No reassurance from the husband that she did the checking. 
um, and she's got to talk to herself, and he's got to tell the OCD, don't listen. And then for the final step, she gets to check once. Nobody says whether she did a good job, everything's checked, and she's supposed to move on. And if she, if she reaches that goal, there's a reward. Maybe they'll go out to dinner or celebrate or do something. And as she passed through each of those steps that we talked about, where she was checking ten times, then five times, she went on her way down, she should reward herself after she accomplishes it for several you know, days, whatever the time period is. Reward herself, um, something that she enjoys, um, you know, for a job well done. Because, you know, that's how we get through things in life. We reward ourselves. So that's an example exposure and prevent, uh, of exposure and ritual prevention and how when you let the anxiety build, it eventually has to come down. Our bodies cannot stay in a state of massive anxiety forever. I think the amount of time is like, I think it's no more than, say, 90 minutes that you can stay in an intense adrenaline kind of a way. These are a lot shorter with OCD. They keep on getting triggered and triggered. The brain keeps triggering this anxiety, and it never kicks in the habituation. And the habituation, as I said, is that you get used to the idea, you get used to the anxiety, get used to the thought, that you know what, you can't have 100% certainty. Because that's what this disorder is really all about. The seek and need for certainty. And the person wants to know for certain that they're safe. Nothing's going to happen to someone they care about. The house isn't going to burn down. Or no bad luck is going to happen. I mean, stuff like that is what causes them to panic. And it's if they wait long enough, they'll realize that their body just got used to the anxiety and now it's gone. It's subsided and they're finally able to breathe and they learn to master that. They learn to tell themselves, stop it. I'm not listening. Go away, OCD. Don't make me worry about things that I don't need to know 100% and if I don't, I'm okay with that. I can move on. 